My guest today is Dr. Pascal Bastien. Dr. Bastien has worked in large community hospitals in Toronto and Ottawa, and he's been recognized for his teaching in internal medicine and family medicine. He also writes perceptively about Catholic medical ethics and about the vocation of a Catholic doctor. And it's those things that I wanted to discuss with him today. You asked me, David, how I define the vocation of a Catholic doctor. Perhaps the first thing that should be highlighted is that it's a vocation. We don't approach, uh, as Catholics, the role of the healer in the same way that might be approached elsewhere. Certainly, it isn't simply a job. It isn't even simply a profession. It's a calling. It's a mission. Uh, and it's rooted in the sense that Christ himself uh, is a healer and that we have the privilege to participate in his healing ministry. It also is rooted in a certain understanding of the human person. We believe that we are, as full human beings, a body and a soul, and that these two are inseparable. And so when approaching the suffering patient, we hear the echo of the words of our Lord, what you have done to the least of these, you have done to me. Once we turn our understanding of healthcare in this sort of machine where we apply a technique, uh, we, we run the risk of forgetting actually what we, are, what we are there for in the first place, and maybe to a certain extent look after the body but forget the, hu the full human person. When we use the term dying with dignity, we are using it often to promote euthanasia and to suggest that frail, aging, elderly patients are in the process of losing or may have already lost their dignity, as though this is something that they had at one point and could lose later in their life, as though this were external propriety. And of course, that is not the Christian understanding. The Christian understanding is that their value stems from the fact that they are made in the image of God, that they are children of God, body and soul, and that it's a gift. And you cannot lose this gift. Medicine obviously cannot be simply reduced to its transactional dimension, whereby a patient comes in with an isolated medical problem, they receive a given antibiotic, and their problem goes away. That might work for the otherwise healthy 37-year-old patient who comes through our doors, but most of our patients are much more fragile and bring with them a lot of baggage of suffering from their living situation, from their mental health problems, from their, their existential crisis and their marital discord. And if we don't address them in a complete way that understands that they are more than their disease, then we are not actually providing Christian health care to them. Their loneliness, maybe their mental health difficulties, their social isolation and their loss of personal sense of, of value. And that requires an effort of perhaps you know, shedding a little bit of the aura of the lab coat and becoming just a fellow human being beside our patient at the bedside. I was involved indirectly in the care of a patient who had asked for euthanasia in the context whereby they could not return to their previous long-term care facility. And I witnessed a fellow Catholic physician reach out to the long-term care facility, explaining to them that because of this system block, the patient had lost all hope and requested made, which they had been approved for and were just waiting for the clock to tick, basically. Having heard the patient and not accepting this easy answer, he reached out and basically asked to bend the rules. And once those rules were bent, immediately the patient was happy to say, oh, you know, I never even wanted euthanasia in the first place. I just really didn't imagine my life anywhere but in my previous home. This, I think, is is an enormous dimension of how Christian healthcare, of how Catholic healthcare should distinguish itself.